So I'd like to come with you guys with a lot of triggering um, significant serious messages from what we're seeing um, from people speaking out that, you know, Philip definitely was having some kind of conversation with people who were definitely minors. Hey guys, it's Marad Morali. Hope you guys are all doing well today. Back again with another video. If you have not subscribed, click that button, guys. It is daily and consistent content. Subscribe to the channel and let's get straight into this video. So we all know everything about Philip Schofield and there have been multiple people coming forward about just you know, non-harmful conversation that they have been having with them on Snapchat, on Twitter, following as well. And it's just been very odd that he has been following minors, especially given the conversation of what's happened with Matthew. And yes, even though he was intimate with him whilst he was, you know, of age, there was some kind of contact with these two from what we have seen um, in terms of verbal contact. Um, definitely one he was a um, minor, which, you know, is very inappropriate. But now it looks like other people who have tweeted quite a while ago, who have come forward and are speaking themselves. This guy called Kamal has says, also Philip Schofield used to tweet me when I was like 13 or 14. He had a thing for replying to tweets from young boys. I was 15. The boy replying to me at the time about getting Philip to follow me since Philip already followed him was 13 years old. I found it. Philip Schofield followed me on Twitter when I was 14, sent a little wink to me. Let me just breathe this again to you. He had a thing for replying to tweets from young boys. This Jack Terrell guy said, shall I ask him to follow you? Who was 13? These 13, 12, 14, 15 year old boys don't know any better. They are naive. They're very young. They're minors. They are like, whoa, somebody big wants to follow me. They're not. They're blinded by it. And that is the first step of what grooming can do to you. Why is Philip wanting to follow speaking to or even winking at those who are very much minors. And this particular boy who was a minor is speaking out himself. This, these aren't other people who are inferring for him about how uncomfortable it is that he's converse, conversing with the minor. This person who was a minor who's now not is the one who's speaking out himself, expressing that he is uncomfortable with the fact that Philip had messaged him and had sent him a wink or etc. Why are you having those conversations with young minors? What kind of kick do you get out of it? And why are you even doing it on a public platform as well? It shows how sinister it is thinking that he can get away with it. And one of those interviews with Matthew, he did say, well, if I'm getting away with this still, I'll be a happy man, is what he said. It's absolutely sick and twisted that, you know, there are these conversations. With another buddy, with another one via Snapchat, the guy says, love you, and then he smiles, he smiles back, and then Philip says, 13 is good. What do, what do you mean by 13 is good? What does that mean? What does that mean? What are you referring to? Are you referring to his age? Are you referring to maybe a date? Or are you referring to, you know, um, something in the calendar? I don't know what you could be referring to, but you know, my worst judgments are that he's referring to his age. Yet again, another minor, there is a, you know, conversation going on. Now, whilst these conversations are not harmful and are innocent conversations, why are you, as somebody in their, your 50s, having conversations with minors in any capacity? It is weird. It is weird. And that is how grooming can begin to grow. That is how grooming can begin to grow. There is an assumption that people believe that grooming is violent. Grooming does not have to be violent. It can also be very silent. It can be very passive. Grooming can look very attractive, look very friendly, look very warm, look like, you know, a nice hug, look like a place where you can confide in and be comfortable in when really and truly it is all just a trap. That is what grooming it is. And that is a completely different side to it as well, where it's just, peaceful fake side of come to me, confide in me, speak to me. I, I'm attractive with what I have, the opportunities, the ambitions, the money, and etc., etc., etc. And if these minors, these boys wanted to be a presenter or TV or etc., he, I believe, would have definitely have continued on those conversations he would have with those minors until they were 18 plus, and then there might have been some intimacy there definitely going on. It is absolutely sinister. These are the men in the world. If you have children, girls, boys, protect your children. They should not be having any communication with the way social media is going right now, with the fact that artificial intelligence is taking over, with the fact that there is deep fake, you know, in intimate conversations and et cetera, et cetera. There's catfishing and I, Apple has just introduced this new goggle thing where we are completely mirroring reality now with what we're seeing digitally, which is very dangerous. You are going to have a huge rise in a lot of young boys having conversations with these grown men. These grown men are seeing everything with technology, finding ways to get away with it, and they're gonna have a lot of these conversations far more so and entrap these young boys. And then once they get them and then they abuse them in any kind of way, like it's happened to me multiple times, it really distorts your brain.
It is so sad. Why is he speaking to these miners? This the story has been completely dead, but I'm going to continue to speak on it no matter how many views this gets. I don't care if it gets low views. I don't really give a damn, to be honest with you. It's all about raising awareness for the fact that men are grooming or are abusing young boys all over and there is no protection no conversation there's absolutely nothing that is for it and it's a shame the fact that one of those miners is speaking out expressing how uncomfortable he was that philip was speaking to him on that if there was no twitter and they were speaking in person how more uncomfortable would he have felt remember the two face academy somebody wrote on reddit that they saw philip doing something with a kid sitting on his lap and that 10 year old expressed uncomfortability when you are a minor and you express uncomfortability i believe it believe your children when they feel uncomfortable converse with your children notice their behavior if they change or look or feel different in households what is happening to them who and what sleepovers are they going to what is going on people need to protect their children 110% absolutely, especially in their young years, because unfortunately, like in my position, if you do get viciously abused X, Y, Z by people, you know, not within my family, but people, you know, in institutions, like in my experiences, it really messes with your brain. It messes with your boundaries. It distorts your perception of what any kind of intimacy even is. And it's so hard for you to say no. And it sets you up to continue to be groomed and abused in further places in life because because you've already had it already multiple times and that is what your brain has been damaged and learned. Different neurons are connected based on the abuse that you have experienced which affects your behavior and who you are as a person and can put yourself in positions where men will continue to do it constantly, constantly, constantly as you get older. It sets you up to continue to um, further that abuse so that men and men know this. They know this, like it's very, very dangerous. Nobody defends our boys, nobody protects our boys. And then these same boys grow up being abused or seeing what's going on online. And they, some of them take part in this vicious incel culture, which we're seeing, which is rising, which is very anti-feminism, anti our women, disrespecting our women. It is rising as well. It is just a chaos. And I just feel like it's such an epidemic. Nobody cares for our boys. And when I see conversations like this, yet again, a 51 year old man winking at a 13 year old boy online, it is absolutely disgusting, diabolical and ridiculous. And there are no mainstream conversations. This person who was a minor is speaking out on Twitter. Why aren't papers picking up on this? Why is no one speaking on it? Why aren't articles? Why does nobody care? Because the story has died down now. It's died down now. It is absolutely wild. The way men, a grown men, will find boys, even in my position when I was 17, 18, 19. Yes, I, you know, I was of age. I was no longer a minor at that time. 17, 18, 19. And they would bring me, uh, you know, and they would know that I'm in a homeless position. I'm easily exploited and I'm running from a significant amount of rape that I was going through and abuse that I was going through. And then these men would put me in such awful positions, lock rooms, beat me up, force me to say offensive stuff to them because that's what they want to fulfill their sick fantasies. And it's just a shame. And it boggles my mind how nobody cared about the men. Nobody, when it's all went public last year, very easy to find my scandal. Nobody cared about the grown men in their 40s making me do things at a very young age. And I said multiple times I was beaten up by these men. Nobody cared. Nobody cared, guys. Nobody cared. So if nobody cared for me, who the hell is going to care for these young boys? Who the hell is going to, who, who the hell, who, who, who is going to care? It's not like I was abusing anybody. It's not like there are victims or I hurt people. There's allegations. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. It was just me doing things for grown men that I should not have been doing. And I was very uncomfortable in those positions and I didn't really have any choices and I was running to survive. Had I had that support early on in my life, I wouldn't have been in a position to try and support myself. But young boys who are homeless, escaping abuse, don't have anybody else. Where do they go? Where do they go? If this conversation with Philip and this minor continued at the age of 13 and he ended up being abused or whatever, X, Y, Z, where would that minor go for help? Where would he go? There's no after school places, there's no foundations, no charities, there's no helplines, there's nothing. There's no protective systems for these young boys. It is absolutely insane. And then they end up growing up using their own tools, which are damaged tools, to try and survive and become somebody. And they can't become whatever because they end up then either furthering the cycle or being messed up or end up going on binge drinking, alcohol, etc. It's just wild. It is wild. And with the with how technology is growing, it is just scaring me. So I'm not surprised by this. 
I'm disgusted by this. Absolutely disgusted. Let me know thoughts on when it comes to this, guys. Subscribe to the channel, click that button. It is daily and consistent content, and I'll catch you guys soon for another review. I really recommend everyone to go therapy, even if you don't feel like you need it. I feel like we all need it because even when I speak about this stuff, it is incredibly triggering for me to do so. And so, Follow me on Instagram, Instagram if you guys want to. I'm Moral and it's Morali. It's in the bio below. I would thoroughly appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys soon for another review. Oh, Lord.